Hello everyone. Welcome to the second part of our third chapter of economics, money and credit. So in this second part of our video lecture, we are going to discuss our leftover chapter and then the leftover chapter again we will be discussing in our third and fourth video as well. So getting started, our first topic for our today's class is loan activities and credit. So in order to make you understand this whole topic of loan, banking, credit, we'll be watching a small video that will give you an idea as to how all of this works. So let me show you this video. gave you an idea as to how we people, we Indian citizens, if I take an example, submit money or deposit money to the bank and how bank then later on give it to the lenders or whosoever is in need of the loan. So basically our today's video lecture will be all about digging deep into how bank works, what is the consequences that bank might face, who's the godfather of bank who makes sure that this problem doesn't arise and all of that. So getting started with our first topic is loan activities of bank. So let's see. Banks in India currently hold about 15% of their deposits as cash. Most deposits are used to extend loans on which bank charge higher interest rates than offered on deposits. So students, in order to make this concept pretty easy, I'll be giving you introduction to how all of this works. Okay, so let us again start with my favorite example. Okay, so for example, there is a person whose name is Raj. Okay, Raj goes to bank in order to deposit some amount. Okay. Raj deposited, deposits his amount into the bank. Now, what bank will do? Let us see what bank will do. Bank will open Raj's account and bank will deposit the money into his account. Now, bank will hold about 15% of the deposit by Raj. Okay. Rest of the money will be used by bank into giving loans to another person although raj since raj has deposited certain amount into bank raj will be getting an advantage which is that raj will be earning interest so how will he earn interest whenever even you later on whenever you will be opening your account into for say any bank okay let it be xyz so when you will deposit this some uh, some amount of money into your bank bank will be providing you interest on that money okay so first thing is that raj will obviously get interest on the amount that he has deposited second thing talking about what will bank do is bank will although bank will show total amount as to how much he has deposited to him all the amount will be shown into his app whatever app of the bank he uses right but inside work will be that bank will hold 15 percent amount of cash uh, deposited by raj for raj and the rest of the amount bank will use in order to give loans to the person in need okay and when bank will give loans to the person who need loans they bank then will charge higher interest rate higher interest to the people who bank has given loans okay 
द इंटरेस्ट रेट दैट बैंक चार्जेस ऑन द लेंडर्स और द बोरोस हु बोरोज इंटरेस्ट हु बोरोज लोन्स फ्रॉम बैंक द इंटरेस्ट रेट दैट बैंक चार्जेस ऑन देम इज हायर इज वेरी हाई एज टू द इंटरेस्ट एज कंपेयर टू द इंटरेस्ट दैट बैंक गिव्स ऑन द पर्सन हु हैज डिपॉजिटेड देयर मनी to the bank so this is how the whole process works okay i i hope this particular whole process is clear to you moving forward okay now there is a picture which is same that the bank what bank does is the person person deposits money into bank and they can withdraw it with interest bank offers them interest right now bank also lends money to the people that needs money for loans in the form of loans and the amount of interest that bank charges to its borrowers is pretty high as i have written over here as to what it gives to the people who have uh, deposited money into their bank okay moving forward we have two questions what do you think would happen if all the depositors went to ask for their money at the same time depositors are the people who deposit money into the bank our question says that what will happen if all the people go to the bank to ask for their money so as we just read that bank keeps only 15% and rest he it uses to give loans to people so in such scenario bank will absolutely not be able to provide everyone with their money because it has provided people with the loans for that money so not everyone will get the money as to the whole amount that they have deposited it depends on the certain situation that the bank is bank might provide bit bit to everyone but not the whole amount of the money because we just studied that bank only keeps 15% rest is used in giving loans to the people in need and then again yes it charges interest to the people who takes loans and the one who keeps their money into the bank that are all, that are given interest but from the one that uh, from but from the people who have taken loan from bank from them uh, the bank charges interest so yes the answer for this is no that no bank will not be able to provide money to everyone and if this question comes to your exam then obviously you can explain you can or, or, or you can always use this you know particular percentage in order to describe and make your example to be more precise moving forward credit credit or loan is an agreement in which a lender supplies the borrower with money goods or services in return for the promise of repayment in future credit is the money for example i am the creditor okay for okay oh, let me make this example a bit short for example there are two person okay a and b a wants some money so a will go to b b will say okay i will give you money i have money now but you have to repay me i am not giving you as a gift that okay take it i don't want it back you have to repay me okay so this situation is of credit or loan so whenever we take a loan from somebody be it bank be it some any uh, non informal source we always have to uh, repay it the only difference in taking the loan from bank and informal sources that to bank you have to repay the money with interest but when you take a loan from your relatives friends or family members then it's on them if they are okay with you then they might not charge interest but they if they you know you keep on delaying to give them their money back they might charge interest but yes they are in formal source though uh, 90 90 99.9% charge uh, charges are there that they not charge you for the interest but bank will 100% charge you for the interest so 
main meaning is that whenever you take credit or loan from a lender lender can be anybody any informal source not bank so you have to always repay it you cannot keep it that's not a gift you always have to repay it and when you take loan from bank you have to repay it with interest that's the only difference moving forward two different credit situations first is saleem saleem a shoe manufacturer borrows money to increase the production swapna a farmer borrow money to meet farm expenses so over here both uh, all of us can see that these two examples are entirely different one is asking for money because he want to increase his business he is not facing any kind of loss or something like that he just want to increase his business that is the reason that he needs a little investment and it's not there is no information that his business is not going good which gives us an idea that yes his business is going good he wants to increase it a bit that's why he needs a bit of amount a bit of investment on the other hand swapna condition for swapna is entirely different swapna needs to borrow money because he's she is unable to fulfill the expense that are there while farming you know while farming a farmer needs a lot of things pesticides insecticides a lot of things a lot of you can say machines are also required be it sprinklers be it any other farming machines so swapna needs more uh, money so that she can fulfill the expenses she is you can say she is having a shortage of money but if we say, if we see saleem that then we can observe that there is no shortage of money here so he will be able to repay the loan that he is taking but in swapna's case there are you can say 50 50 chances that she might not be able to pay back the loan she might be able to pay back the loan if the farm yields grows good and you know she is able to sell everything so yeah there are 50 50 chances in swapna case but in saleem case we are 100% sure that he is having a good business he is investing it to increase a business so yes he can borrow money and he later on he will be able to pay back the person from whosoever he is taking a money be it formal source be it informal source now let us see to conclusion credit can play two kind of roles credit can play a positive and vital role helping improve the production and grow income so this is the case of saleem so this is our first point second is credit push the borrower into a cycle of debt from which recovery is very difficult this is the case of swapna okay so basically what this means is that for example saleem is taking the loan from informal formal whosoever he is taking loan that's the main thing so he can invest the loan whatever money whatever sum of money he has taken he can invest that particular amount of money into his business and his business can increase and after selling after everything he can again get earn huge profit in that and repay the loan so this is one this is the positive side but in case of swapna we are already we can already observe from the example that she is already facing a lack she is already facing a shortage of money so there are might be chances that she is taking money to fulfill the expenses then it might can happen that you know she is not able to yield that good so she is not able to earn money so again she takes money to again get the stuff for the farming then again she takes money again to get the stuff of the farming so it will be a whole cycle from which she can never come out so there these are the two possible conclusions okay moving forward now let's see the questions the activity answer the following questions based on examples we learned about so first is that why did they need credit so we have to answer this in according to both saleem and swapna so the first thing is why did they need credit second is what was the risk third is what was the outcome 
So let us start by our first one which says why did they need credit? So Salim needed credit because he need to meet the work capital which he needed for his work capital requirement whereas Swapna needed it to meet the expenses of his cultivation. Now the second is what was the risk? So uh, here they are asking us that what was the risk? Was there even a risk or there was no risk? So in Salim case we can say that okay there will be either no risk or a little risk but that's also unknown. But in Swapna's case the risk of crop failure is there. As I said that it, it depends, it entirely depends whether the crops will yield or not. Third is what was the outcome. So in Salim's case we can say that the supplied order, the whatever order he is supplying, he can earn profit and then he can easily repay the loan. But talking about Swapna's case, there is you can say uh, in the outcome you can say that it will happen that might be there will be a crop failure. Then she'll be you know in the inbound, she'll be basically you know tied in the you know circle of debt where she is paying one taking one paying one taking one so these are basically the outcome scenarios where they both are in and these two basically show you the two sides of loans one is positive which can give us you know a hope of growing towards a better future one is negative which entirely give us a bad hope that no we are bound in a circle of death okay moving forward to the next question which is that supposing Salim continues to get orders from traders what would be his position after six years what are the reasons that make Swapna's situation so risky discuss factors pesticides roles of money lenders in climate so the first question is that what will happen if we suppose that Salim continue to get orders from traders what would be his position after six years. So in this case he can if he continues to get the orders from the traders so in this case he can basically use the profit that he's making from the sales to finance his business and then he can it easily he'll be able to you know submit the loan that he has borrowed from the renders and in this way he has no need he didn't need to you know get any other loan from the borrowers in future because he can easily make the money from the work that he's been doing if his work uh, luckily goes that well second thing is what are the reasons that make Swapna's situation so risky so the reasons that make Swapna's situation so risky is because that as we can see she's a farmer and apart from being a farmer her ongoing condition is not that good right she already is unable to meet her expenses so in order to keep that keeps in order to keep up with them she is getting the loan but what if her farm again i'll say the point that what if her farm doesn't yields well then what will be the result again she needs to you know borrow the loan and the, again in order to fulfill that loan that she has borrowed in the first place she'll be again taking the loan so basically she'll be you know in the cycle of loan that she'll hardly be able to you know come out of over here they are asking the factors of pesticides role of money lenders in climates so pesticides role of money lenders in climates are like poles apart if you want my opinion the first thing is pesticides so pesticides are basically used for you know farming so she'll be taking pesticides in order to take pesticides she needs to borrow money which will be again make her you know debit to in debt to someone else role of money lender over here in her case is very crucial because she needs money and they are the only informal source with to whom she can you know go in order to get money because if she'll go to bank she'll have to pay interest as well and she doesn't know how much time 
it will take for her and in bank if she even thinks about it then she knows that okay the interest will double up if i won't be paying it on time in the informal sources that's not the case okay there's only one interest and if you pay it you have to pay it if don't they might not even tell you about the interest but if you get late so yeah they might tell you depending upon your relation with the ones you are asking money from climate is very important in swapna's case especially because swapna is again a farmer yielding a crop uh, rain is very important they don't have tanks of water so they are directly indirectly dependent upon rain to you know get the water so that the farming can go well the crops can be you know healthily grown not that uh, the ones that are unhealthy and black not that so yeah this was all it this these are the main reasons and these are the main factors all three of them are pretty good so yeah this type of question can absolutely i would say can come to your exam with high weightage i would say like this question can come around 5 to 6 marker so make sure you're clear with the deep summary make sure you're clear with the as to why make sure every time you do a concept you ask yourself the question of why because the more why is it will be the more yes it will be in your future that means you're clear that why are you doing this what is the concept behind it you don't just you know learn 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 don't be a bookish worm i would suggest that in in economics the bookish worms never happens so make sure that you're clear with the in depth concept of this particular topic so with this we are done with the banking and the loan part and that was all about our second video so in our third video we are going to cover up the next topic so i hope you see the third video in order to make that happen and i hope whatever we did in today's class you understood it and make sure you go to the questions that we covered in our today's class these are all your ncert questions and it will help you a lot in your exams thank you